Okay, he's back two years later. Surprise, surprise. This is a continuation of some di discussion I've had regarding my childhood, my family, my school, my friends, community. And in previous uh, interviews, we'd gotten through most of my elementary school experiences. Uh, so I'll begin with my uh, recollections of eighth grade because I think that was kind of a transition year uh, for me both socially and physically and uh, uh, mentally as well as chronologically into high school. First seven years of my school experience were probably best described as quite socially uncomfortable. Um, I did not spend a lot of time with other children. Um, was very introverted. Um, timid at best. And um, didn't really have a great deal of, uh, of confidence in my relationships and in what I was doing. I... Uh, but about the eighth grade, things changed. Maybe, as I thought about it, it was two things happened. One, I experienced a growth spurt. I was the largest kid in my class by several inches. Uh, and that growth spurt uh, gave me quite more confidence, unwarranted as it probably was. It also uh, enabled me to be a lot more competitive in athletics, and, and the success there gave me a lot more social confidence, probably uh, uh, interpreted more by others as uh, a little bit arrogant, and uh, definitely junior high uh, smart aleck. Uh, I think that was... Uh, about the only year in school when I could describe myself as probably a little bit difficult for the teacher to handle. And uh, it was also the year in which I discovered girls, and that, uh, that uh, translated into a lot of silliness that was not well received by my eighth grade teacher either. Anyway, uh, we had a basketball team that was quite successful, and I thought of myself as the star of that team, warranted or not. So when I got to high school, I had just come off a pretty heady year, but of course, one's freshman year in high school has a lot to do with um, calming those uh, unwarranted expectations. At any rate, uh, I began to behave in a quite less uh, smart aleck fashion and uh, continued to enjoy the athletics and was able to compete as a freshman in high school athletics and uh, as a result enjoyed my friends a lot more. And living in a rural community, uh, People didn't wait till they were 16 years old to drive. So in the eighth grade and uh, on through high school, I always drove a vehicle to school and had a lot more independence. In the high school years, I think the most memorable part of that was the, as I look back, the relationships that I formed with close friends. And again, being in a small community, a small school with very little turnover of, uh, of people in the community. The people you started school with in the first grade were most likely the people you were going to graduate from high school with 12 years later. And that was true of our class. There were six of us in the first grade class in 1944. Those same six students graduated 12 years later from high school. So, uh, Going all through school with the same six people resulted in some very close relationships. And uh, the time we spent with those people was, uh, was especially uh, rewarding uh, in my adolescent years. Uh, probably the 
biggest trouble that anybody got into was a speeding ticket or more likely a reprimand from the local marshal um, for reckless driving, which really wasn't reckless, it was just noisy driving. And what our parents thought they had to be afraid of was uh, nothing like what most parents have to worry about now. There was really very little trouble to get into. As uh, as I grew into 14, 15 years old, farm work was just a full-time activity for all of us. Whether we lived on a farm or my friends lived in town and they worked on the farm, it was uh, athletics at school, athletics after school, uh, work on the farm, and continuing interest in girls. Those are kind of the three things that uh, uh, took up most of our time in the high school years, none of which could occur too far from home because there wasn't anything within driving distance too far from home. Not sure what there is to talk about there, Chris. Mm -hmm. In addition to my friends, I think one of the more memorable parts of my high school years was my family and the things I uh, uh, was able to do with my father. Uh, working together every day on the farm forged a very close relationship. Uh, he always took me hunting from the time I was 12 years old. And and as I became older, we would uh, hunt every possible day of the pheasant season and quail season. And one of my most memorable experiences with my father was our time that we spent hunting in Nebraska. It was about 30 miles away, and of course we wanted to be there by sunup. So we would get up about 4.30, pack our lunch, drive to Smith Center, which was about 20 miles away, uh, and uh, stop at a restaurant that opened very early and have a big breakfast, then drive on up to the Nebraska line and hunt pheasants all day. Uh, that happened every weekend from November to January through uh, all of my high school years. The other uh, thing I recall vividly about my family is they never ever missed an event. Uh, my maternal grandmother lived with us, or we with her, uh, all my years of growing up, and she was as much a part of our family as my mother and father were. But all of them, to my recollection, rarely if ever, missed a school event, an athletic event, or anything that my sister and I participated in. Maybe not unusual, but it seems so to me because rarely did the rest of my friends get that kind of attention from their parents. I know, for example, my father only missed one of my basketball games from the time I was a freshman in high school until I graduated from high school. That was meaningful to me at the time, but even more so now, as I look back on it. Academics and high schools were somewhat passive. Um, I can't describe the curriculum as rigorous or the teachers as rigorous, but I felt like when I went to college, it was a good experience. And I felt like, um, our little tiny high school had provided an educational experience that was uh, quite remarkable given the resources with it, which they had to work. Of course, there were funny experiences with uh, uh, growing up in a small community where everybody knew everybody else's business. We 
still had a local <clears throat> telephone switchboard with the old party lines. And uh, every call went through the manual switchboard, and a manual switchboard always had the town gossip that uh, ran the switchboard. Uh, one would dial the number by turning the crank on the phone. She would pull a wire out of our receptacle and her switchboard and connect it to the number we told her we wanted to talk to. And then I'm sure she would sit there and listen to our conversation as would the other 12 people on our party line as soon as they heard a phone ring. So everybody knew one way or another everybody else's business. And uh, it always seemed to me like the, those, uh, those stories were embellished to outlandish proportions when they got told over and over around the street. The same characters sat on the same spit and whittle bench in front of the post office as you might see in any little town. Names like Slick Fleener, Scott Cowan, Hearn de Garber, Hap Damon, no end Hob Carter, no end of spit and whittle loafers telling stories. Ed Winters was the town marshal, always wore a big coat with a big 45 revolver under the coat. Never saw him pull it out. Don't know what he would have done if he had to pull it out. But in spite of his uh, lofty position as town marshal, he was also the local bootlegger and um, dispersed his wine and other beverages freely throughout the county from, uh, from his cave behind his house. So we had a lot of interesting characters and experience, but but as I recall, every one of those characters, as well as our parents, seemed just as interested in uh, what we as kids were doing as, uh, as our parents were. And uh, I, I thought a number of times it's almost like, sometimes to my horror and sometimes to my comfort, it's like everybody in the community was a parent. And I think it really was true that almost everybody in that community would have done whatever it was they needed to do to help us if we really needed help. And I felt that way for years and years, even after I left home. There was a community of support there that one doesn't experience in a larger city, and particularly uh, where uh, residents are transitional and do not spend a lifetime together, and not just a lifetime of, uh, of the generations, but of past generations. <clears throat> Many of the people in that community had been friends of my grandparents, had gone for uh, when they were young people, had been uh, uh, classmates of my mother when she was in school. and. Uh, the relationships went back three and four generations, which made for uh, an unusual closeness in, uh, in that community. Um, whenever I recall, try to recall those high school years, it uh, you recall certain landmarks or thing marks. The car I drove to school was my grandmother's old gray 39 Chevy. I guess it wasn't so old back then, but it was 17 years old. And that was known far and wide as uh, the rumble buggy that, uh, that I drove. And of course, uh, my parents didn't mind because that way I didn't ask for the real car very often. Also, whenever I try to recall experiences from high school, it seemed like that the uh, athletic activities keep coming to forefront. The track team, the basketball team, the baseball team, and we didn't have a football team. Subjects in high school were very traditional, so traditional in fact that there were uh, 
for the four classes of high school students, there were 16 or at most 17 classes one could take over the four years. Four per year were required, 16 units of total. But with four high school teachers, there weren't many options. It was social studies, manual arts, algebra, geometry, the traditional courses, biology, but traditional including typing. It was the scourge of the boys who had to sit in typing class for two solid years. Funny as that seemed at the time, annoying as it was at the time, a friend in my 50 of mine and I were visiting a couple of years ago. And he said, you know, of all the classes I took in high school, the one that had the most long-term, immediate, day-to-day -day usefulness to me was that awful useless typing class because now I can run a keyboard a lot faster than most of the people with whom I work. So some of those experiences seemed trite and useless at the time, turned out to be a quite useful part of our future. Uh, the teachers, as you might guess, was a wide array of abilities and effectiveness, uh, none of which we were able to recognize at the time as just whether or not we liked them or didn't like them. We equated with being a good and a bad teacher. But most of them were, again, genuinely interested in us as if we were some of their own, their own children. And uh, that made for a real meaningful school experience. I do recall actually getting up every morning and looking forward to going to school and, uh, and basically having a good time. It was a, a stress-free life. But then it came time to think about going to college and the stress-free life uh, suddenly uh, kind of went away and got filled up with lots of uncertainties and uh, questions about what comes next. Where do I go? Is that thing really taking a picture? Yeah, I was going to turn it back on. Yeah, he's still going. No, that's all right. Stop it for a little bit. Of 